So the, um, a quick overview of the grants. There's two of them available. There's one for businesses with five or less employees, and there's one for businesses with 50 or less employees. Um, so the nice thing is that these are grants. They don't need to be repaid. Like um, it's not a loan. It's not an EIDL loan. Um, it's not a PVP loan. If you received EIDL money, because they have to repay the EIDL amount. Um, so it's, it's nice to just kind of, it's similar to free money. Uh, the program does use FTEs to determine business size. So if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I have 55 employees, you know, I don't qualify for either of these, think again. Because if your employees are less than 40 hours a week, you know, you're going to hit that 50 employee threshold. Uh, so both programs have an application due date of noon on uh, November 12th. That date is coming up. It's, um, I know it seems far away, but I can't believe Halloween's tomorrow. So, you know, let's get these applications in. Um, requirements for the grant, you have to be a Massachusetts-based company or at least have a location in Massachusetts. You have to be for-profit um, and you cannot be a rental real estate company or real estate sales agency, uh, a franchise, a liquor store, a weapons dealer, lobbyists, or a cannabis-related entity. Um, that one was kind of a broad encompassing no-no. So the grant details, if you're receiving, if you have five or fewer full-time equivalent employees, then you have up to $25,000 in funding. The tricky part on this one is that you as an owner, and all the owners, I guess, in theory, must own 80% or less of the area mean income based on your income, on your family size. So if your, you know, business makes $1.2 million a year and it's a flow through and uh, 600,000 flows straight to you, you're not going to qualify. Uh, so you can kind of look that up. I believe they have a link on their website to the area amount. Uh, acceptable expenses. Um, it's This one is the more encompassing rent, staffing, utilities, technical assistance, general support, and stabilization of the business, um, and PPE, which is interesting. I, I know a few of the uh, federal acts regarding the PPP loans was one of the amendments was to add PPE as an acceptable expense um, on that bill. It also talked about adding drive-throughs as an expe acceptable expense. So not much has happened with that one, but it was discussed. Uh, if you have 50 or fewer full-time equivalent employees, then you can receive up to $75,000 of funding, but it's not to exceed three months of your 2019 expenses. Um, this is very similar to PVP loans, in my opinion, um, because one, the funding is capped based on 2019 totals, as well as your employee, pay, the amount, the forgivable expenses or the appropriate expenses, I should say, are employee payroll and benefits, mortgage interest, rent utilities, and interest on other debt obligations, which is the same as what it was for the PVP loans. Um, so it's something, you know, to think about. It's kind of, it's almost as if this grant is a state-sponsored PPP loan. Um, so even though the federal government hasn't opened up a second shot, maybe the state government has. Um, okay, so here's for the less than 50 employee uh, application process. As I mentioned, I did this one firsthand with a client. Um, so I know a little bit more about what the steps are. Uh, I would presume that the less than five employee one is similar, but I can't say for certain. Um, so you do need to set up an account with the M Massachusetts Growth Capital Corporation uh, to begin. And then you're gonna enter some demographic information. Priority for this loan is being given to businesses run by women, minorities, LGBTQ plus, or I think that's the correct letters, um, and businesses that did not receive federal aid. Um, so if you received a PPP loan, it doesn't disqualify you, but you, will not be given the priority. Priority is being given to these businesses. Um, and they do ask you very specifically, are you this, are you this, are you this, are you this? Uh, so that is one thing to know. So you request the amount of the grant given. I forget if it's in what the increment is, but I know it's at least in $5,000 increments. So you have to choose. I don't recommend asking for $75,000 flat. Uh, I think everybody will do that. I think that they're gonna get sick of that. I think if you ask for a reasonable amount, they're more likely to give it to you. Um, and you do actually on there, it has a table and you need to show them how you're gonna spend this money. 
So if you say, oh, I want $75,000, you need to show them how you're going to spend $75,000 in the next three months on payroll, rent, utilities, uh, mortgage interest, things like that. Uh, and then you're going to have to upload some documents. And the documents that you need to upload, it's a copy of your 2019 business tax return and your personal tax return for all owners that have a greater than 20% interest in the company. Uh, so your business tax return, if it's a, if you're not incorporated, that'll be in your Schedule C. You know, that'll be incorporated on your personal tax return. But if you are incorporated with the Secretary of State, you will have a separate tax file. Um, any business licenses that you have, assigned W-9 form. Now, W-9 forms technically do not expire, and technically you only need to produce one or reproduce one whenever you change your address or name or things like that. I recommend that you sign, send one in dated in 2020. Um, you can download it right off the, uh, the web. Uh, just type in W-9 form, the IRS has them. Uh, what you'll put in at the top, you just put in the company name or your name if you're not incorporated and the address information of the mailing address. And then the EIN, if you are, your business is separate from you or you your social security number, if it's uh, not incorporated, you're, not, you're doing business as a sole proprietor. Uh, it's pretty easy, it's self-explanatory. If you need help, give us a call. It doesn't take more than two minutes to do. Um, and then, so if you are an incorporated business though, what you also need to send them in is a certificate of good standing from the Secretary of State website. Not from the DOR, not from the IRS. This is from the Secretary of State. Um, again, I did this for our the client that I was assisting. Um, went right onto their website. It was a fifteen dollar fee to have it expedited. Got got back to me within six hours. Um, emailed straight over. Perfect. Good. Done. Ready to go. Um, so you'll su submit that. If you're a sole proprietor, um, you know, you're not going to have a certificate of good standing from the Secretary of State, but what you will have um, is you're doing business, uh, DBA, your DBA, doing business as agreement um, that's submitted to your town. Um, you, should also, you can also get your business licenses from here too. Uh, we recommend that anytime you're doing a business out of your home that you license yourself with the town. So that's a good place to start. Um, so the points to make note of, so for those that receive federal aid, as I said, this doesn't preclude you from getting this grant, but it does make you less likely, you know, your priorities behind other people's. Um, if any money that you used for PPP forgiveness cannot then be used as this. So let's say you did your 24 week covered period and your covered period was, you know, you got your loan in the end of July, the last day to get a PPP loan was August 8th. So let's say on August 1st, you got a PPP loan, you have 24 weeks. Well, you're, it's going to extend up to December 31st. Uh, the problem with that is that, okay, so, and you need to use all of it. You need to use all of it for payroll. So if your payroll is $1,000 a month, you have $6,000, whatever it is. If you're using your payroll or your rent or your utilities or your mortgage to qualify for PPP forgiveness, it does not double count into this loan, so or this grant, I should say. So at the end of the three months, if you say, oh, well, I used my $100,000 salary, I used $100,000, uh, I used, I counted it on both, that's not gonna count. They won't allow that. Um, I think it's gonna be easier if I do a little example at the end of this, um, and I can explain it better that way. But the money needs to, if you're saying, I spent $100, you can't say, it can't be the same $100 you used on the other one. Um, the other part of the application is to explain why you need to think this money, why you think you need this money. Um, so don't just tell them the business is bad. Give them data, give them reasons, um, and explain. You know, tell them, hey, you know, oh, I can't have people in my restaurant. Oh, you know, court is shut down for the time being, so I don't have billable hours. Tell them, you know, I'm a daycare and I can only have half the number of students, but I have to have the full amount of staff. Explain this thing to them. Let them know why. And also think ahead and explain why your business will need this money, given the uncertainty of the future. So, you know, say, hey, right now everything's fine, but my business will shut down for six months. If we go back one step 
in reopening. We go back to phase two, my gym is closed. I, I will have no revenue stream. And yet my rent is still due, my this is still due. I still need to keep the lights on. I still need to pay you know, health insurance for my staff. Explain to them the future, explain to them their fears, get them thinking about your future. Uh, it's gonna just benefit you in the long run. Um, so I'm gonna take a moment to sidestep this questions. Um, we'll come back to it in a minute, but I just wanna show you an example of this, of what I was talking about with the money, how it cannot be for both. Okay. So let's say you receive PPP loan of $12,000. Um, in your covered period is August 1st to December 31st. All right, so you'll be spending December, you would be spending about $2,400 a month in payroll, let's just say. Well, now let's say you get this MGCC capital grant for, hi, that would be really good today, um, for 10,000. And you say, okay, November and December and January. And so your plan is to spend $3,333 a month on payroll for this. Well, for this to work for November and December, you can't say, all right, well, I've already spent 2,400, all I need to spend is the difference. No, what you need to do is you need to spend $5,733, not just the 33.33. It needs to be above and beyond that. Are you all able to see this whiteboard? Um, sorry, I probably should have asked that before. Yes, we can see. All right, thank you, Adam, sorry about that. Um, so it needs to go above and beyond. And just construction count. Um, so as long as you're above what it is, you know, you can't double be double dipping, double counting this these expenses. Otherwise, they'll write them off and they'll say, it doesn't work like that, you can't do it. Um, so that's one thing that you just need to know and pay attention to. Uh, the acceptable uses, it is extremely similar to your PPP if you have over five employees, but less than 50. So, you know, you just need to be cognizant of that. If your PPP is already gone, then don't worry about this. You can kind of, I mean, you're still going to get less priority because you've already received aid, but you don't need to worry about the expense issue of double counting, double doing this. Um, so, okay, I'm going to go back to the questions now. Uh, So I see two questions in the chat. Um, does construction count? I presume this is for um, the acceptable businesses. It should. Um, there's nothing to say that construction didn't not count. Um, so construction should count as an acceptable business that goes into this, uh, this website for the application, www.empoweringsmallbusinesses.org slash COVID-19 response, blah, 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 blah. Um, that has the full list of what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. You can start there. Um, I don't remember seeing construction companies being listed as one that was not allowed. Um, okay, what is covered period? How do you determine this? So a covered period that goes to your PPP loan and that was the time you had to spend the money. So originally when the PPP loan came out, it was eight weeks from the day you got the funds. So if you got the money on um, May 1st, you had, you had till June, I want to say June 24th or 25th to spend it. It's, you know, basically just counting, going down the calendar, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and picking the day. If you got, and then what happened was the PPP Flexibility Act came into play and it said, okay, for loans that were 
distributed before June 5th, uh, you have you, your choice. You can have an eight week covered period or 24 week covered period. Uh, for any loans June 5th or onward, it is automatically a 24 week covered period. Basically, it's just you have 24 weeks from the day you got it to spend, make sure you've spent all the PPP funds, uh, excuse me, and uh, get forgiveness. So if you say, um, you know, you have 24 weeks, you didn't spend all of your money, it's not forgiven. It's just as simple as that. It's kind of, that's the importance of it. Um, the, and it's just, you start with the day you got the money and count out X number of weeks, either eight or 24. Um, though it can be less than 24, it can't, the, one of the interim small, one of the interim final rules from the SBA said that it can be as soon as the money is gone. Um, does this include new businesses just started this month? Um, this grant, I'm not sure if you need to have history. Um, they may inquire why the business is new. Um, again, this empowering smallbusiness.org slash COVID-19 response uh, will have more information on that in the uh, Massachusetts Growth Capital Corp. Um, we'll also have information. I know that I spoke to someone at Brookline Bank yesterday who said that, um, you know, she was involved with the FGCC and uh, the microloans that they do. So uh, if they can't help you with this grant, they might be able to help you with something else. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I'm going to hang around on here for the next few minutes or so. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to send them in the chat or just speak up. Um, this video will be posted online to YouTube and on to our website. Uh, but I do recommend that you write down that link, empoweringsmallbusinesses.org. You can also Google, uh, you know, Massachusetts Growth Capital Corp, and this will take you right there. So thank you all for coming. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks.